Apple finally released iOS and iPadOS 18.2 Developer Beta 1, giving us all those Apple intelligence features that Apple's been talking about since WWDC, like Genmoji, Image Playgrounds, that ChatGPT integration, and most importantly for me as an iPad user, ImageWand. So in this video, I'm gonna answer all your questions about ImageWand, like do you need an Apple Pencil to use it? What applications can you use it in? What kind of limitations does it have? And also just the ins and outs of how to actually use ImageWand in your workflow when you are using it in the Notes application. So without further ado, let's talk about ImageWand and everything that you can do with it. Leave some comments down below of what you're gonna be using ImageWand for. I'm excited to hear that. Let's get into it. Well, alright everyone, let's get right into this, and I do want to continue to mention which iPads are supported by this, so you do need an M-powered iPad or newer, or of course, like the new A17 Pro iPad Mini, we'll be able to support all the things that I mentioned today in regards to ImageWand, and that's what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to have a future video talking about all the other aspects, like the image playgrounds, like Genmojis, for you guys to get an in-depth idea of what each of these features will be able to do. But let's jump right into exactly what this is going to be like. So it's going to be in your Apple Notes application, and you're going to notice it in your Apple Pencil toolbar. So down here is where you have all your different tools. As you can see, we've had all these for years and years, but now you have a brand new one. It kind of looks like an eraser, honestly, or the back of a regular pencil, but just with a rainbow eraser at the end of it. And that's going to be your image wand. And now image wand is going to work in a few different ways here. The first one is going to be being able to take something like this, which is going to be handwritten notes that I've already pre-written out to make this a little bit easier. And then it's going to take those notes and create an image from scratch based on the different context rules that you gave it. So picture this as being a bunch of different props that you input into some sort of Apple intelligence or AI feature, and then you're going to use your image wand. So you're going to want to make sure that your image wand is going to be selected here, and then you're going to pick an open area in the actual note, and then you're going to make a circle, and then you're going to see the Apple intelligence starts to kick off. And you can see immediately that it's taking some of those prompts that I've already written down, again, in my handwritten notes, and that's what it's going to use to create this image. So you see here that it's taking all these individual prompts as if they're different categories, similar to what you do with image playgrounds, which again, we'll touch on in another video. But you can see that it's going to take all these, like the fourth wing setting, like the cliffs in the clouds, high in the mountains, huge dragons flying, and it's going to give me a couple of different image options here to then choose from. So definitely take that into account, and that's how you use it in terms of actual written note taking. But if you don't like what it's showing you here, if you want to add a little bit more, you can actually tap in to describe the image and add something else. Like maybe we can write down that it's, you know, raining at the same time, because we want it to be in a raining category. So it's going to add that into the categories, it's going to do its magic, and then I'm going to try to show that again. As you can see, it doesn't really add too much, if anything at all, but that's the way that you can add more and more. And then finally, you have the plus button right here, which allows you to change how it's being shown. So right now it's in a sketch format, you can change it to the illustration format, or you can change it into that animation format as well, as it works as magic. So you can see that it does look a little bit different. And then the longer you wait, the more options it's gonna give you. As you can see, it's populating more and more. And then as you scroll to the right, it's gonna give you even more options. You can see in the animated version, it does give me that rain a little bit, which is nice to see. And then you also saw that in this little plus button over here, you got a few more options. Basically, it's reading some more of these different points that you've made and is asking you if you want to add more to it. So you can press this plus sign right here, one small gold dragon, and you can see that it does add that same gold hue to the dragon, making it a little bit smaller looking and things like that. So once you're done with this image, you can press done right here. It's going to save itself, and now it's an image that you can resize. You can it access any other JPEG if you wanted to. You, you can then press the ellipses and treat it like anything else. You can remove the background, cut, copy, paste, duplicate it, recreate it. And that's what this new button is right here. This button is to recreate it and kind of start from scratch with everything to see if it gives you another option. So that is how Image One works in the Apple Notes application by using just actual handwritten notes as the context rules. But now what if you draw a simple sketch and you don't have anything worded down here, but you want to draw something that's maybe a very rough draft and you want to see what Apple Intelligence can do for you then? Let me show you what that looks like. So now here we have a super rough sketch, as you can see here, which is kind of like a, I guess, a hillside with a tree, a house, the sun, some birds. And this is going to work similarly to how it worked with the note taking. But instead of actual words, you're going to use the magic wand to then circle the sketch. So again, click on your image wand, let's circle it. And then it's going to start to work its Apple intelligence magic. But the difference between the sketch versus the actual handwritten notes or any context rules or anything like that, it's going to ask you for a prompt. So I'm just going to type in hillside to make it as vague as possible to see exactly what it actually gives me in terms of something based on the sketch. So you can see it's taking that category plus the sketch that I drew down and it's creating what it thinks I want to create. So you can see that it completely missed the house. It did have trees there. It's got the mountains. It doesn't have any birds, but if I keep going through, 
Again, still no house, it doesn't see the house, which is a little bit disappointing, but again, this is still beta one that we're working with, but that's the idea. You can also, again, change all the styles like we did earlier to get a different type of illustration. You can change it to animation as well. As you can see there, it's gonna change it to that, but maybe if I wanna add in another criteria like home to see if maybe it does add the house, maybe it sees it this time. Again, you can see that it did make a house, but again, I had to type it out. So I do think that it works a lot better when you actually have handwritten notes or some context rules that I can work off of, because again, at the end of the day, those are just prompts that it's using to then build it after the fact. So I think when you combine notes with a sketch, that's when you're gonna get the best results, but that's what you're getting if you're just using a sketch and you're being as vague as possible. So keep that in mind if you are using Apple Intelligence and the image wand, when you are just hand drawing stuff, it works better with actual written prompts. And now one thing that's funny is that, again, this is definitely a glitch right now in beta one, but you can see that it kinda took the overlay of my handwritten sketch. So you have the tree right here, which is being shown off. You have the house, which is kind of in place. The sun is up there and it's missing the birds, but maybe I thought the birds were mountaintops as opposed to birds with my bad handwriting or my bad drawing. But that is something to take into account of maybe it shows off how it's actually working a little bit in the background. But now let's talk about a couple things of maybe what are some limitations of this new image wand and what can't it do moving forward. So first and foremost, in terms of where Image Wand is available, it's gonna be only available in the Apple Notes application. I've tried the other situations where you do see that same toolbar. For instance, when you have a screenshot, the Image Wand does not show up in your toolbar down here, so you can scratch that idea. And it also surprisingly does not show up in Freeform. So if I go into Freeform, go into here, let's say I wanna do a handwritten note, we'll tap on our toolbar. Again, it is not here. So that's something to take into consideration that as of right now, Image Wand is only available in the Apple Notes app, which again is totally fine, but for the most part, I am surprised that it's not included in free form, but that is also expected, especially in this beta one process. Let's see if maybe it gets added a little bit more holistically throughout the native OS. A second limitation to take into consideration is that it will not draw people. So I tried to do one here by putting together a stereotypical witch, which again, that's not even a specific person. It's more so just a holistic look at what a stereotypical witch would look like. And you can see down here that I put a couple of different descriptors. And if I pull up my Apple Pencil toolbar, if I pull up the image wand, and then if I circle here, it's gonna tell me that it's unable to generate an image with this description. Images involving people are not supported. So another thing that you should take into consideration when using something like the image wand. Another aspect that's a little bit of a limitation is with specific intellectual properties or different IPs. So you can see here that I wrote something like Dragon Ball Z, I even have NFL player, then I even went more generic with baseball player, and then finally I wrote in Netflix, when you use your image one here and you try to create something out of there, it'll just tell you that it's unable to use that description. So another thing to keep in mind in terms of limitations, when it comes to the image one, it seems to be more kind of scenic. It needs to be very broad in terms of your descriptors and able to then create that scene for you or draw that object for you. So when it comes to people and something as specific as let's say something that has intellectual property, for right now it's off limits. Maybe that'll change as time moves on, but that's something to consider. And then finally, one question that I did wanna answer that some people had was, do you need an Apple Pencil to actually use Image Wand? And the answer is no. So as long as you go into your settings and go over to where it says only draw with Apple Pencil. So you go into your Apple Pencil settings, only draw with Apple Pencil, make sure that's turned off. Go into your notes application, and then let's go back to this one. Let's actually delete this. And if you pull up the toolbar, have make sure that the image wand is selected. You can just draw a circle and it'll work the same exact way. So you can actually use your finger. You do not need the Apple Pencil to use the image wand in order for you to get going. So those are the main things that I wanted to walk everybody through when it comes to this new feature, which I absolutely love. I think image wands is something that I'm gonna be using very heavily. I just hope that Apple brings it A to free form. I hope that we get a little bit more from an IP perspective and hopefully maybe we can import things from image playgrounds so then start actually creating people in certain settings as opposed to something that's a little bit broad. But let's finish up the video. So hopefully now you get a better understanding of what to expect with Image One once you finally do install it when it does release probably at the end of December alongside iOS and iPadOS 18.2. If you're brave enough to jump into the beta program, it's been about 24 hours since I've installed it on my main M4 iPad Pro and it seems very stable, especially compared to 18.1, which caused a little bit of overheating and caused some bug issues. Again, I've never dealt with anything detrimental in the beta program dating back to iPadOS 13, so definitely rest assured on that sense, but again, to each their own, install it at your own risk, but if you wanna play with these, I do think it's something that's worth considering, especially if you wanna play with those Apple intelligence features that we mentioned in some previous videos. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. Let me know what you think about Image Wand. Is it something you're gonna be using moving forward? Are you excited for it to be built into the Apple Notes application? How will you be using it? 
Always curious to know exactly what that looks like for you, but if you made it to the end of this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we have more stuff coming exactly like this to educate you guys on exactly how to use Apple intelligence and whether or not it's going to be useful for you. But that'll do it everybody. If you want to watch some similar videos like this one, click on one of these right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here everybody. Peace.